Hey guys, I'm Siobhan, an internal medicine and rheumatology specialist. I just got to the hospital. I've got quite a few interesting patients that I'm rounding on and I'm excited to bring you with me today. I've been getting a lot of requests from you guys to do more vlogs and it's true, it's been so long since I've done one. But I've gotta say, I'm really excited to be filming again today and telling you guys some updates about what's been keeping me so busy. I feel like we've just gotta catch up. Okay, so my morning routine is basically head to the office and then make my tea and print out a list of patients. That's the list of patients I'm gonna be seeing today. Okay, so we've got about 18, 19 patients to see today. And there's one in particular that I'm really excited to tell you about with their permission and keeping it anonymous. So this is a woman in her 30s who presented to hospital with a seizure. She was at a food court, I think waiting for food, when she dropped and had a seizure. Someone called an ambulance and she was rushed to the hospital. And then again, when she was in the emergency department, she had another seizure. And at that time, the nurses checked her blood glucose and it was dangerously low. So they corrected her sugar, but it just kept dropping over and over again. So they hooked her up to a D10W infusion, which is basically just an infusion of sugar water. Then she got admitted to hospital and I met her the next morning. And when I went to see her, she looked fine. She was sitting up in bed and she was just sipping on ginger ale. I asked her, if this had ever happened before and she's never had a seizure but she does get these episodes where she feels kind of shaky and anxious and a bit sweaty and she has drank some soda at that time and feels better she's been drinking more and more soda to make that feeling go away and at this point she's drinking 24 cans of soda per day even waking up in the middle of the night to drink some more as well she actually doesn't go anywhere without a can of soda with her and she kind of looked at me like she felt guilty saying, I think I'm addicted to soda. So I think she's probably having episodes of low blood sugar that she's just been self-medicating at home. And as you can tell, I'm excited, I'm intrigued, and I really wanna figure out what is going on so we can help her. Diabetic medications are by far the most common cause of hypoglycemia that I see. But there are many other conditions that can lead to low glucose production or high insulin production. But from what the patients told me and from the initial investigations that have been done, we can cross out a number of these conditions already. And the only way to actually figure this out is by getting a sample of her blood when her glucose levels are really low. So how are we gonna do that? Well, she's going on a fast. No calories, no caffeine for up to 72 hours until we can get that sample. I honestly feel so badly for her. I would be incredibly cranky if I had to do this, but I just think it's so important for her to get these answers. Okay, so I'm heading upstairs now to see how the fasting is going. Now, the patient hasn't eaten since, I think, dinner last night, and uh, she hasn't gone low yet. The nurses are getting pretty nervous because they're worried she's gonna go hypoglycemic and have a seizure, which, is really understandable and it could happen. So I'm just gonna walk by frequently today, check in, make sure everyone's feeling comfortable. By the way, did you notice something different? No mask walking around the hospital. This is still pretty new, so I still feel a little bit weird, like I'm doing something wrong, but it's such a nice change. Oh, but we still do see patients with masks on. That hasn't changed yet. Walking into the room, I check on the patient and she tells me she's hungry, but okay. Her sugars are around 3.8, but haven't dropped low enough yet. At her bedside, I've got emergency medications available, an emergency glucagon kit, and D50W, which is a concentrated sugar solution that can be directly injected into her veins if needed. All right, so now it's basically a waiting game. So for now, I'm gonna go see my other patients. Mark's been waiting patiently. <laughs> to go get lunch. Okay, I'm finally ready. And of course, he now gets paged. This is always what happens. We try to make plans for lunch and then one of us is always getting busy. Yeah. Okay, destination, Tim Hortons. It's our only option. Only option today. It's not my favorite. We'll make do. The bagel bell's not bad. It's okay. What do you guys think? This is not an advertisement. <laughs> So you guys might be wondering, where have we been? And it's actually been a crazy month. We uh, we started up here two weeks straight on service here in the Sioux, lots of call, big long patient lists, and somehow we managed to squeak in a little bit of violin practicing yes. every morning at 4.30. And that's because we just got back from playing with the World Doctors Orchestra. Seriously, a whole orchestra full of doctors that get together from all around the world to put on charity concerts. It was just so amazing to be able to meet so many different musician physicians. Yeah, so she's not the only violin MD. We've True. had probably another 20 violin MDs. There's a whole 
section of viola mds cella mds and tuba uh, mds yeah. <laughs> got to meet some of you guys from the community who came to the concerts like it was it was such a special experience and definitely want to do more of those after that we spent a few days exploring phoenix and hiking i just couldn't get over the size and beauty of the cacti and we were so excited to ride in a self-driving car for the first time it was absolutely incredible to watch this vehicle navigate turns and merge into other lanes. I honestly, I thought I'd be nervous, but it felt surprisingly safe. What do you think? Would you try riding in one of these cars? You know what? Bye! Oh, and the other reason it's been so busy is because I've been training for my first half marathon, which is in just two weeks. And Mark is running his first full marathon the same day. That's right, it's been a lot of running and a lot of call too. So sometimes those <laughs> two things uh, intersect in a really funny way. So I'll be out trying to hit my splits, completely out of breath. I get a call from the ward. So hi, <gasps> it's Dr. Weatherall speaking. And the nurse is like, are you running right now? <laughs> speaking of running, uh, we should probably get going and see the rest of our patients. Sounds good. All right, let's do it. Okay, now I'm preparing to give a patient two shoulder injections with corticosteroid, or as most people call it, cortisone, mixed with lidocaine. This patient has bursitis in both shoulders and it's really painful for her. So she's incredibly grateful to get the injections today. It's actually really nice to use my rheumatology skills in the hospital. Great, how low? Perfect, yep, you got the, yep, okay, perfect. Yep, give the glucagon and I'll be right upstairs. Thank you. Okay, bye. Okay, so her sugar dropped down to 2.8. They've got the blood work done. Now they're giving glucagon, which is the hormone that should raise up her sugars right away. Um, but I wanna go and see her now. Walking into the room, I learned that the patient had become symptomatic, feeling sweaty, lightheaded, and tremulous, all symptoms of hypoglycemia. After drawing blood work and giving an injection of glucagon, the fast is finally over and the patient was already ordering food to the hospital. <laughs> okay, so she's doing well now. She's sitting there having her ginger ale, looks good. So I think we're in the clear. We won't know what happens for about three to five days. I will update you at the end of the video. So often I get, I see comments from you guys saying things like, your hospital's empty, like where is everybody? But I wanna tell you that I'm usually strategic. So for instance, today is a Sunday and that's why there's not a lot of people here, especially in this area of the hospital, but I promise the hospital does get busy, but again, empty hallways. <laughs> the other part of that is I do wanna get consent for anyone who's in the video. So if someone's in the background, I just don't film. So for all of you wondering why the hospital, Okay, hey guys, the rest of the day was a total blur. It was impossible to film, things just got so busy. Now I'm at home, done with the, the work week. You can tell behind me looks a little bit different, that's because we moved. Another thing that's kept us really busy recently. So now let's chat about our hypoglycemia patient. I wanna update you. So the blood work took about four days to come back, and when it did, it showed high levels of serum insulin, proinsulin, and C-peptide. Now, any med students or residents watching are probably having flashbacks to exams because this is getting pretty deep into some complex physiology. Basically, this tells us that her body is making too much insulin. And I'm most suspicious that there's either a tumor that's making that insulin or she's producing antibodies against insulin or the insulin receptor. Now, both these conditions are super rare. I've never actually seen them in real life. I've just read about them in textbooks. But it really goes to show you that if you don't look for those really rare things, you'll never diagnose them. So I ordered some blood work and a CT scan, and then my weeks on service were up and I handed over to the next doctor. So I actually don't have the answer. I think it's one of those rare conditions and I hope that satisfies your curiosity and knowing that there are some other really rare causes of hypoglycemia out there. It's one of the realities of doing acute hospital medicine is that you can really only do one or two weeks at a time, otherwise you would just burn out. because It's so intense while you're doing that work but then you don't always get to follow your patients to figure out what happens in the end. Give this video a like if you want to see more Day in the Life videos. Be sure to subscribe and that way I'll see you in the next video. So bye for now.